So do you think they give you the uh, worst one first so that they can then give you the less harsh ones? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Might be that the first ones are... Marita told me that a lot of people have to have eight lots of chemo. No, I haven't found many people that have to have 16 lots, but anyway. Mm -hmm. Marita told me sometimes that they have to have eight lots, they gave up after six, and I think Marita, I don't think Marita had to have that many. My other friends in writer's group that had cancer a few years ago, both of them only needed the operation and needed radiation or... Well, they were cancer. probably given a silly stat like yours as well. They didn't need it, they weren't recommended. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, they think... probably had double, they probably didn't have triple negative, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, right. Sorry, I'll put something out here in the ears. Is that high enough? Yep. I might have done bone, but I may have been used my ankle for a little bit of leg roots. Everything's the blowing your base chakra, so everything about this whole thing makes you feel ungrounded and unsafe. And the emotion that keeps showing up over and over and over again is wanting to run away. <laughs> Sound about right? I'd run away, but only the energy. <laughs> <laughs> well, sleeping's the other thing we do when we don't have the energy to run away. Sleep's a good escape. You know, one of the days when all over wasn't hurting when the bone pain was real bad. I think it's the sacroiliac or something. Sacroiliac, yep, yep. I think it was that that thing that was giving me the most yeah. grief. So I presume there's a lot of places down there that they can marrow can do good stuff for. Mm, yeah. And there's a huge amount of nerve. So the sacro so the sacrum has a whole bunch of nerve plexus that come out of it. So there's a huge amount of nerves well, in some, there. Sometimes that was the absolute worst part. But, you know, some days it was every bit of bone in your body, and mainly on the back side of your bones. It was hurting more and I couldn't... But other days it was only the spine, and then it was just the sacrum iliac. Yeah, sacroiliac. Mm, that thing. Mm. The stem enhanced one with the same as I said not to take. I haven't taken not all of them. Sometimes I haven't had the energy to take everything, but I have been taking the five bracts in my right bracts. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes that's it. Sometimes I get game and shove everything that you can mix into a drink and manfully drink that at night. So I've been looking at what you send me and I've been trying to get whatever you say is the mm. most important. Yeah. And it's weird because it is changing every few days. <laughs> Little Shelby. She um she saw a specialist yesterday. She's been getting some numbness in the middle of her fingers. What from? I don't know. So she's going to massage. Out. Not sure. I was sorry. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I'll find out tomorrow if they find out. You know, sometimes they take weeks to find out. Sometimes it's stuff. Sometimes they don't find it. Is this boy trying to make me taller? <laughs> so yeah. I look so bad. <laughs> no, we... I'm just smidgen on the 70th in today. Oh, well done. 
I got up past 72 over Christmas mm -hmm. or whatever, doing nothing and freaking out, whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, stress raises cortisol. At least the one thing about it, I don't like chocolate. Yeah, right, it's changed your taste buds. Which is one of the reasons oh. why you go to eat oh. something, which is one of the reasons why I probably like the cheese. I seem to have been craving salty things. Yeah, right. I must go and buy myself some salted peanuts or not peanuts. Almonds, I think, are yeah. better, aren't they? Yeah. Why the cashews so good for you? Yeah, as long as you don't have any issues with them. Yeah. I, I, I actually bought walnuts today. They must be still in the bag. Walnuts are great for you. And they definitely have anti-cancer properties. Oh, I, I had walnuts and sliced them eight for lunch yesterday. Oh, I think I had some gluten-free biscuits because they were there at the... Um, At the centre, they always provide a sort of morning and afternoon tea stuff. Yeah. Whereas most people go and buy themselves a toasted sandwich at lunchtime. You, when Len Price rang up before, was to congratulate me on like my whatever upgrade promotion. Promotion. What the hell are you talking about? But when they put a picture of Archie and me with me in the paper, because it was part of an exhibition and it was on page three, and I rang up Len Price and sent an email or something and said, Look, I think you'd like to know that I find you finally made me a page three girl because I'm there on page three. And page three, you traditionally in the young. In one of the London newspapers, they always had a nude or nearly nude girl on page three. Yeah, yeah, right. Because we write a lot, we know a lot about this sort of page three girls, even if you don't. Yeah. Anyway, that's why she was just telling me, because a little picture of me about this big in the front corner of the paper saying to read their columns. Yeah. Which I presume probably happened because I gather they got a lot of positive comments about my, or otherwise, about my column last <laughs> What was in your column last week? I said karma was coming and I thought that really and truly if anyone thought you were ever going to be positive about doing anything in hospitals, if they put in cut and paste and say that when they're going to put a quarter cap in me they're going to stab a needle in the neck of your child, didn't say anything about stabbing any needles in me. Mm. They've obviously done a very bad cut and paste. God only knows how long they've been handing out this shit, but everyone else is hasn't been doing editorial work. The councils for themselves, nitpicking stuff from IPC and everywhere, everything I've done, I mightn't have been an editor, but I've been a nitpicker. Yeah. Very first council meeting I went to, I got into trouble. Oh, I got good headlines for being eagle-eyed. But Jeff Sharper was head chairman of the finance committee. I don't think it was polite to me for six months because I should have said, said it to him. First council meet, how the fuck would I know what you're supposed to do? <laughs> I just saw it and it looked wrong to me, so I got up and asked the question if it was right. Because it didn't look right to me, and it should. I didn't think it should only cast the first 50 checks to be for payment. I thought it should have cast the only 250, or 1,050, whatever it was, but you know. And of course I was right. I was so sure I was right, I didn't want to enjoy that I could show this to Terry Shield, but I said, look, you know more about this accounting shit than me. But look, have a look at this. I said, it looks completely and utterly stuffed to me. I said, I think I really should ask about it, don't you? And he said, yes. That may well have been when we started having meetings of councillors before meetings to discuss any things like that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't meant to be nasty, it was just dubbing love and under spade, and I never attended a council meeting until I got elected and it was there. As you do, I suppose, when you're councillor. Mm. Someone said I should go to a council meeting. I went into the, into the building once in the days when they didn't have any locks between us. I actually found the meeting room. There was no bastard in it, so I went home again. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were out for lunch, but I didn't know uh. that. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody said anything on, to me on the way there or the way back, so I didn't say anything to anybody because I didn't talk to me. We didn't have a look. Found 
I guess I couldn't have a prove that I'd been there. <laughs> that saw me. But there was no people in the room, so. Oh! Okay. So it is still tender in there, obviously. I didn't say it wasn't tender. I said you had to be careful where you did it. I didn't know that. I didn't know that this car was that far mm, over. Interesting. It's not interesting. I didn't always did. I haven't mean, I haven't used deodorant for three months or two and a half months or something. Yeah. When you put it on there, it feels like you're putting it on someone else. You know how you feel the stuff on your skin? It doesn't even feel as much as like putting it on your clothes. It does feel weird. But this one since it's got fat as well. Yeah. Have I still got on fixed hairs? They wouldn't fall off if I suppose the lady didn't hear. <laughs> Well, I said the other day, maybe my fan cares will fall off as well. If Carl will tell, Carl will virtually tell me to shut him. I don't care if my hair falls out. It's just that in the process, I'm, I'm going to the hairdresser on Friday to have it washed. Yeah. I think that I'll get her to give me a number. I have no idea what the number two is or number three or number 84. Yeah, right. They just go, right, let's just be done with it. I'll, I'll ask her to give me the longest one that you could do to keep me my head warm until it actually falls out. Is your metabolism a bit crap now? Like, are you feeling the cold more than normal? No, but I remember when Mary Thomas we got Robert to shave her hair off and then I gave up smoking. That must have been round about your birthday in 1985, 88. And she did it so that she'd win the swimming, even though she was only grad. She certainly wasn't a senior, but she certainly won the senior competition in the swimming because she was so good. After Robert had shaved the hair, of course, and got into trouble. And Robert was dead a couple of weeks later on St. Patrick's Day. Mm. 